This is question number nine. We're told the circle C has center A, two comma one, and passes through the point B, 10 comma seven. In part A for four marks, we're asked to find an equation for C. The equation of a circle can be given in the form x minus a, all squared, plus y minus b, all squared is equal to r squared. This gives us a circle, center a comma b, and a radius of r units. I'm just going to draw a quick sketch here. So my sketch is going to be down at the bottom. We're going to have the point A. A will be the center, so A is just here, and that is 2, 1. And then we'll have some point over here, which is going to be B, which is going to be 10, 7. So we can see straight away I can put the coordinates of the center in. So we'll have x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 1 all squared is equal to the radius squared. We can use the distance formula now to find the radius squared. So that distance right there, let's go ahead and write this down. We can say that the radius squared is going to be now 10 minus 2 all squared. So this is just using the distance formula or Pythagoras. Plus we're going to have 7 minus 1 all squared. So we can see that the radius squared is going to be 8. 8 squared is 64 plus now 6, 6 squared is 36, so we can see that r squared is going to be 100. So from this now we have x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 1 all squared is equal to 100. So that gives us our circle, centre A, which is 2, 1, and we have a radius of 10 units. We're told the line L1 is the tangent to C at the point B. In part B for four marks, we need to find an equation for L1. All we need now for a straight line is a point that it goes through and a gradient. If we look at this now, we can say that the tangent will meet the radius at right angles. So we'll have a right angle just here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this one M1. This is going to be the gradient of the radius. M2 will be the negative reciprocal, the gradient of a normal, or if you like, the tangent. So if we look at M1, we've got now the change in Y, which is going to be 7 minus 1, over the change in X, which is 10 minus 2. So this is going to give us 6 over 8, which is going to give me 3 over 4. Therefore, we can write now M2, which is the gradient of a tangent, will be the negative reciprocal of this, and that will be negative 3 over 4, as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative 1 if perpendicular. We've got now a gradient, and we've got a point that it goes through. So we've got the point b, which is going to be 10, 7. We've got now m2. m2 is going to be equal to negative 4 thirds, so I'm simply going to use y minus y1 is equal to m, multiplied by x minus x1. You can, of course, at this stage use y is equal to mx plus c. So we'll have y minus 7 is equal to now negative 4 thirds multiplied by the quantity x minus 10. That is an equation. We might want to tidy it up, but we're not asked for it in any specific form. We don't, we're not asked for it in ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 or y is equal to mx plus c, so we could leave it like that. We're now told it says the line L2 is parallel to L1 and passes through the midpoint of AB. Given that L2 intersects C at the points P and Q, in part C we're asked to find the length of PQ given our answer in its simplest third form. The question carries three miles. Let's go ahead and draw that. So what we've got then is the midpoint. Let's get a different colour and we will grab up this one. So this now, let's see if we can get something that's going to show. We'll go for that one. Right, that's going to pass through the midpoint just here. So if we consider now the midpoint of this uh, radius just here, so let's go ahead and do that, the midpoint of AB. We've got now the midpoint, and I'll put mid. So mid is going to be now on here, the 10 plus the 2. So 10 plus 2 over 2, comma, 7 plus 1 over 2. So that's going to give us 6, 4. So this point right here is going to be 6, 4. So all I'm going to do at this stage now is draw a triangle. I'll take the triangle away shortly and just show how we're going to do it. 
So this now is the triangle that we're going to create. If I look at this now, and I'll just draw this up, what we've got is something that looks like so. This is the center of a circle, and if we put this on, so the center is just here. We've got now the point A. We've got P just here. We've got Q just here. We know that the radius of the circle from the equation is going to be 10. So this is going to be 10. This is going to be 10. And also we know that if this point right here is the midpoint of AB, this length right here is going to be 5. So if I go ahead and put that on, this right here is going to be 5. Dropping the perpendicular down, we can use Pythagoras. So what I've got then is this length right here, P to Q. All I'm going to do is find this point here, and I'm going to call this point the midpoint M. So what I can say then is PQ is going to be two lots of PM, and we know that this length right here, using Pythagoras, is going to be the square root of 10 squared minus 5 squared. So that's going to give me now on here 100 minus 25, which is going to give me the root of 75. We can simplify this now. We can write this as 5, and if we've got now 5 times by 15, we can write that as 5 root 3. So this is going to be 5 root 3. Let's write this in, 5 root 3. Therefore, this one is going to be 5 root 3 as well. So we end up now with PQ being equal to 10 root 3. So that gives us our final answer. A few different ways that you could do that. Quite a lot of work for three marks, but it kind of makes sense. If that's the midpoint, this one is five. We know that the radius is 10 from the previous part. I've used Pythagoras to find this length and simply doubled it up.